Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're just going to create this little fake button here. Um, it's not actually a button, it's a div element and it contains a few anchor links. And as we can see, it's scrolling from right to left and you can pause it if you hover over it just like that. So yeah, something a little bit different to grab the user's attention. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we have our three files, index.htm, style.css and main.js. In our style.css file, we're just resetting some margins and paddings and making everything inside of our body tag uh, center aligned. In our JavaScript file, we're using a match media method to basically run the code if it's on a non touchscreen device. Just a personal preference here, as I'm not a huge fan of having animations run on my mobile phone. So we're going to start off in our index.htm file. We're going to create the markup for our fake button. We're going to call the wrapper fet-marquee-wrapper and this will hold all of our anchor elements. So inside of this parent element, we're going to create another div called fet marquee. So this fet marquee element is actually what's going to be scrolling when we use JavaScript to scroll it from right to left. And now we're just gonna create some anchor elements. And once we have that made, we're just going to copy and paste it a few more times. And now we can start styling this quote unquote button. So we'll give it the usual for a button, a border, a background color, give it a border radius of 100 pixels. So it has that nice curved effect, make it overflow hidden because anything inside it, we don't want to pop out of the container, a max width, and then just make it display flex. And then we'll just give our FET marquee elements a display of flex again to align all of our items inside. And now we can concentrate our time on styling our anchor elements. So first up, we'll make it visible by coloring the text white. Then we'll just change the font size, give it a width of 320 pixels, add some padding, remove the underline, and then basically make everything uppercase. So now that we've got our text ready to go, we just need to create some pseudo elements for the icons. Our before icon will hold the underline squiggle. So what I'm doing here is basically making an area for this squiggle line. I'll give it a content property and position it absolutely. I'm giving it a width and height, and usually I might add in a little red pixel border just so I can see what's going on. Then we can add in our line icon, and then I'll just need to position the line underneath the today text. And now we can create the pseudo after element that will hold the telephone icon. It will be the same format as our before pseudo elements, so we'll just copy and paste these values and change the width, height and position. Oh, and the icon, of course. Now with our underline positioned correctly under the today text, we just need to increase the font size of our telephone icon and position it to the right of our text. And now with all of our elements styled, we have a pretty nice static button that will be used on mobile devices. But what we want to do now is use JavaScript to create the scrolling marquee effect. So first up, we're going to declare a variable called marquee, and this is just going to target the fet marquee element that we created in our index.htm file. This is actually the element again, as stated before, that's going to scroll from right to left. Then here we're going to declare some variables. I'm going to create one called translate value, give it a value of zero for the moment. Our next variable will be called step and this will dictate how fast the marquee moves. You can see that I'm giving this value three decimal places. This will give the marquee a slower scrolling speed. And our last one here is interval ID. The interval ID will be used momentarily to create a new ID based on our set interval timer for our marquee button. And now we can finally create our function that will scroll our button from right to left. We're going to call this start animation. So first up, we're going to check if the interval ID is null or if it has been given a value. If it hasn't been given an ID yet, we carry on and we use the interval ID to create a set interval timer. And we're just going to define an anonymous function that will style our button or our FET marquee element from right to left using the transform and translate 3D CSS rules. You can see here that we're using the translate value variable and we're going to use the two fixed function to give it three decimal places. And we're basically going to use this to decrement our value from zero down to minus 25%. So basically our translate value is being decremented by our step value. So on each iteration of our timer, we're decrementing translate value by the step value. If I wanted to scroll the button from left to right, I would increment the value instead. 
Next up, what we want to do is check when the translate value hits minus 25%. And once it hits this minus 25% value, we're just going to make the value zero again. So it loops over and over. And then at the end of this set interval function, I'm just going to give this an argument of 0.5 milliseconds. I've played around with this a little bit and 0.5 seems to work quite well for myself. So now with our start animation function created, all we need to do now is call it. And you can see here in the browser that the button is indeed scrolling from right to left. And yeah, I think it definitely grabs your attention. I think it would be quite beneficial to show you exactly what's happening behind the scenes here. So in the next screen, I'm going to show you what's going on. So at the top of the page, we have our translate value value, which is currently 0%. And below we have our anchor link elements and they are overflowing out of the button just to show you what's going on. Let's start the set interval timer. So as we can see, our translate value is being decremented quite slowly and our FET marquee element is moving our anchor elements from right to left. The first element is the red box. So when the translate value reaches minus 25%, it resets to 0% and starts the process all over again. As you can see here, the jump back to 0% is quite fluid and I'd wager that nobody can tell that we're only actually looping the first element of our anchor elements. So yeah, that's why we only decrement our translate value to minus 25% and why we have four anchor elements. One quarter of our anchor elements is 25%. And the two last things we need to do are add some event listers to the button. When we hover over the button, I want the animation to stop. And then when I hover away, I want it to resume again. In our mouse over event listener, all we're going to do is clear the timer and make the interval ID null. And this will stop the animation. And then to resume the marquee scrolling effect again, all we need to do is add an event listener called mouse out and tie it to the start animation function. And there we have it. If you end up using this in a project, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to take a look. If you found this tutorial useful, I'd really appreciate if you could consider subscribing to my channel and any suggestions for new tutorials, please let me know in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.